Welcome to a brief demonstration video about the very first version of the Distributed Spatial Multi-Criteria Evaluation web application that we are developing. It is an example of what building blocks of decision support systems infrastructures could look like. So what are we going to show you today? We'll tell you why we work on this project. We'll show you the web application in its current form and we'll tell you what we like about our approach. So first, the why. Increasingly, organizations make spatial data available online. Data in small countries and in big countries. In regions, real-time data and global data on different themes of food and agriculture, economic development, environmental development and health. But always we see one map at a time. And what, what use is that if we want to know where are good and bad places? For instance, we may want to know which place performs best and wins the beauty contest. Or which place is hardest hit by adversity. Which place is in apparent danger and needs immediate attention. Which place to locate an activity, like a project or business. Or which place to put your money. Etc. Etc. We would not need a single map, but a summing of the good and bad properties of locations and compare them. So, where are good and bad places? Until now, you would have to be a rocket scientist to do the analysis. You would have to download the data, get the right software and do the analysis. So, we're talking about a common question looking for a common solution. And that's what we're working on. Now, let's look at the web application. We have a case close to home, that is to say our home, the city of Enschede. ITC is located right here. The case we have in mind is that I am a stranger to this city and would like to get an idea of good neighborhoods to live. For this case we have gone through the trouble of downloading all the data from this public web, web service called Neighborhood Monitor. Then we integrated the different information layers into a table of attributes of all the neighborhoods and offered it again as a web service. Cumbersome, but after all, we're the rocket scientists, aren't we? So let me show you how this works. But please keep in mind that this is the first of the first of the first prototype. So both technically and methodologically, there are still considerable improvements to be made. As you can see, we're using a web browser. And here it is Firefox, but you can use any browser. On this screen, you can see three main panels. To the left, here you see the data panel. In the middle, you see the multi-criteria evaluation panel. And to the right, you get the spatial view. And below this one you have the spatial info panel. Let's start with our decision problem, which is to find a good place to live in Enschede. I have already prepared a criteria tree, which I'm going to finish now. You have to know that I have a family with two young children, and as you can see I want to live in a safe place, which means to me that it should be a quiet neighborhood without social problems. It should be safe for children to play and have few traffic accidents. And the risk of damage to my property should be minimal. And of course, I want to live close to services. I want to live close to supermarkets. And I want to live close to banks. I also want to live in a nice place for my children, which means to me that the lower the average age, the better it is because of other families with young children. Also, the closer we are to schools, the more practical, practical our life will be. And finally, my children love playgrounds. Let me add one more concern. I want to live in a wealthy place. So let me add a new objective field and let me type it. I want to live in a wealthy place. Which means that I like neighborhoods with higher income. So let me add a criterion. 
which by default is shown in green, meaning higher values are better, and can be changed to a pinkish color, meaning lower values are better. As you can see in the previous criteria, always lower values were better. But now I like higher income better, so I change it back to more is better. And I write, the higher the income, the better. The better. So now I have structured my concerns. Now let's make a field appear in which we will be able to drop our maps. And now we turn to the data panel. Here you can connect to data offered online by what are called web feature services. Here we are still using a local service on our computer. You enter the address of the services and click on search. From the servers you will receive some technical information and a list of layers offered. I am interested in data layer about Enschede neighborhoods. That layer gives us a number of maps. You can click on the thumbnail of a map to see its key statistics. Let's look at the average age in the different neighborhoods. OK, let's close this one. And now we need to drag and drop thumbnails into the tree. We already have added most of the maps to the tree and we'll only need to add the last map, which is the percentage of high income households. Now we may want to see the different criteria on the map, for instance, uh, to see where the young and old neighborhoods are. So we drag and drop the average age map to the spatial view panel. Now what is that dark purple area? So if you click on that, you'll see the information about the neighborhood in the spatial info panel. And if you scroll down, you will see amongst all these attributes, you'll see the average age being 55 plus. So this is not exactly the neighborhood I'm looking for. If you do this with other criteria, you develop a feeling for our town. The next step is to give the importance of the different objectives and criteria. In this prototype, weights are calculated based on the order in which objectives and criteria are listed on the screen. Since I find living amongst wealthy people most important, I will rank it highest. Second, a nice place for my children is important. And third, I want to be close to services. Okay, and now we are ready to calculate, but before we do so, I explain what happens under the hood in three steps. First, each map is standardized, meaning that all maps get new values on the same scale, which ranges from zero, bad performance, to one, meaning good performance. Consequently, maps become comparable. Second, weights are calculated for objectives and criteria based on their order. And finally, an overall index uh, value is calculated. Now we want to see the results. The output, output is a map showing suitable areas in green and unsuitable areas in red. The numbers are the calculated indices, giving the degree of suitability on this scale from 0 to 1 that I mentioned earlier. Now guess where I live? Indeed, in the dark green area. I wonder what my wife and children will say, or my friends and parents. Let's take a closer look at my neighborhood, which is the most suitable one.
So we see the following potential for distributed spatial multicriteria evaluation web application. First of all, it can add decision value to spatial data portals. Also, it provides an easy to use layman application through web browsers. And now we have the potential to develop towards collaborative decision making and integrated assessment. Also, the software can be offered as a service. It gives the flexibility to link to different data sources that follow OGC standards. And geoinformatics goes under the hood. It could allow integration of different data sources and the architecture al also allows distribution of the application backend close to the different data sources. Since the application integrates multiple web services, it can be rather easily extended with other services in the spatial or decision domain or other domains such as statistics. And finally, it is an open source project published at Kenai, building on other open source products and open standards, so you can develop it in directions you see use. So we hope you have enjoyed our work and ideas. Please get in touch if you have questions or are interested in implementations and development.